Hello, this video is the first one from a series of three about examples of workflows to manage georeference data with the Autodesk AEC collection, especially with InfraWorks, Civil 3D and Revit. I am Vincent Frodon, technical specialist Autodesk for France, and the manipulations shown in those videos has been created with my colleague Stéphane Balmain, also technical specialist Autodesk for France. To illustrate manipulations, we have selected the example of the layout for a building on a parcel in its context. The main constraints are the correct building georeferencing, the topography with the dedicated platform, and the parcel positioning. In the first video, we are going to create the existing context, add the cadastral parcel, create the platform for the building and create the resulting topography to use in InfraWorks and in Revit. In the second video, Stefan will explain how to link Revit to the topography and manage the building georeferencing. The video number three is about data aggregation in the InfraWorks context and how to enrich the proposal for a better rendering facilitate communication and increase stakeholder buy-in. What are the first manipulations illustrated in this first video? We are going to begin with the creation of the InfraWorks context with Model Builder. Then we will search for the cadastral parcel localization on a public web portal. With the downloaded information, we will create the parcel in Civil 3D. It will be possible then to position the building envelope relative to the parcel to get georeferenced envelopes. The export in SDF or HHP shape format will help to import those polylines as objects in the InfraWorks context. Then we will see how to create the platform for the building in Civil 3D and how to merge the thin surface of the platform to the topography. The topography, including the platform, will be published in BIM 360 Docs to be linked with Revit. And the proxy graphics setting is important at the end to use the DWG file in Revit. Let's begin with Model Builder in InfraWorks to create the existing context. You just have to enter an address or the name of a town to focus on the specific location. It's also possible to use a georeferenced area contour in shape format. Then adjust the zoom level according to the size you need for the model. The limit for this tool is 200 square kilometers. Enter the name for the model and validate. At this point, the Model Builder service online is preparing the data for the model construction. This takes about 5 minutes, depending on the size of the model and the quantity of data. When it's ready, an email is sent, and you can go back in InfraWorks, click on the new icon to launch the model construction. At this point, you can Select if you want to manage the model locally or on BIM360. To share easily my work with Stefan, I select a joint BIM360 project. Stefan will be able to open the model and work on it like me. After validation of the management choice, the model is built with the model builder data. It's fast and very easy. I can begin to visit virtually and analyze the project area.
One of the input data I've received is the building envelope as 2D AutoCAD polyline without coordinates. I know the main shape of the building and the dimensions, 67 meters and 55 meters. To find location information about the cadastral parcel I have to work on, I use a French public web portal called cadastre.gouv.fr. This kind of service exists in a lot of countries. It's also possible to get the same information asking directly to the official service or asking to a surveyor, for example. What is interesting here is that I can play some points to define the cadastral parcel I need and create a text file with the list of those points with their coordinates in a known coordinate system. I've placed nine points to define the geometry of the parcel. After data exportation, I get the list of the nine points with their coordinates and the coordinate system here is RGF 93 CC45. Now I'm going to import the point list in Civil 3D to generate the geolocated points and the parcel. I create a new Civil 3D drawing and the first check is the coordinate system of the WG. It's mandatory to use the same coordinate system than the data I want to import. I change Lambert 93 to RGF 93CC45. Civil 3D can import points from a lot of different file formats. It's also easy to add a customized format if the file is not automatically recognized. Points are now created. Check the geolocation is very easy with the dynamic map. Each time a coordinate system is attached to a DWG in Civil 3D, it's possible to turn on the dynamic map. It provides automatically a map or an aerial image with the good positioning by default in the coordinate system selected. The cadastral parcel here is a basic polyline joining the points. The object parcel exists in Civil 3D, but I don't need an intelligent object here. To help the building envelope position step, I create a parallel copy of the parcel contour. Then I attach the building envelope to the drawing as external reference to be able to move it to the best position and orientation in the cadastral parcel. Now everything is correctly positioned and georeferenced, and I can export objects in GIS format to use them easily in the InfraWorks context. This is the manipulation based on the map export command. This simple manipulation can be applied for any point, line or polyline in Civil 3D. Two formats can be used, SDF and SHP, shape. And the benefit of those formats is that they are very easy to manipulate and they support accurate georeferencing. Importing the cadastral parcel and the building envelope now in InfraWorks is really fast. Drag and drop the SDF file, configure the data to explain to InfraWorks what's the nature of this data, 
and a new object is added in the model. It's really easy now to analyze this proposition in InfoWorks. For example, is this building position the best option regarding to the world's networks or regarding to the topography? Let's look now deeper on the topography and the platform needed for the building. A preliminary approach is possible in InfraWorks, but accurate modelization of the platform is easier to achieve in Civil 3D. From Civil 3D, we are going to import the InfraWorks model data and select only the topography. A small part of the topography is enough. The result is the InfraWorks TIN in Civil 3D. TIN, T-I-N, means Triangular Irregular Network. This is the existing ground. Civil 3D gives easily the elevation of the ground. Here, the ground elevation for this site is a little bit less than 214 meters. Then the platform elevation will be 214 meters to stay above. To modelize the platform, I need the contour of this platform as a feature line to create gradings. Feature line is like a 2D polyline with infrastructure properties. Starting point is the contour of the platform as a basic 2D polyline around the building envelope. An easy way to get the feature line is to create it from the 2D polyline, adding the elevation. With the grading tool in Civil 3D, I can create the grading from the feature line targeting the ground with a specific slope. For this operation, I have to select the method for the grading. Here it's slope from a feature line to a surface. This part of the grading is applied outside the feature line. It's necessary to add a fill grading also inside the feature line to fill the platform volume. This grading object and the linked surface is the shape of the platform for the building. Now I'm going to create a topography surface including the existing ground and the platform. It's easy to do with Civil 3D. I need to create a new surface object and to copy in this new surface the existing ground first and after the platform surface that I've just created. The result is my earthwork proposal with the existing ground in a unique surface object. To facilitate the use of this new surface, it's recommended to publish it in BIM 360. There is a specific functionality in Civil 3D for that. I select a shared project with Stefan for the publication. 
and Stefan will be able to use this surface from BIM360 to Revit. It's possible to visualize the surface with the BIM360 viewer in 2D and in 3D. And of course, versioning can be used to manage this data in the workflow. Display the content of a DWG file attached to Revit, it's recommended to turn the system variable proxy graphics on 1 before closing the file. By default, proxy graphics is on 0 and some entities could not display correctly. To know more about the full workflow, please watch the video number 2 and number 3. Thank you.